name is Michael. I'm 61, and I'm um, currently living at uh, uh, Rockton Mountain. Okay, and where is that? What town? That is in uh, Rockton, oh, Pennsylvania, Union Township. And where are we right now? Where are we doing this interview? As we We're say. doing it in the back of uh, Over the Mountain, which has a, uh, a great story and history of Sasquatch and in uh, a place where um, I find peace. Yeah. Very cool. So, um, obviously, we just did a lecture, and we were talking and, and saying, if anybody wants to share your story, come on out. And you came out, and we just started talking a little bit. But maybe you can give us a little backstory as to um, where you grew up and where you've lived for the majority of your life and where your family's from. Okay, so I'll back up, and um, I'll go as a, as a youth. Um, my father was in the military, so I was um, the youngest of five, and so I was brought back here to the mountains and my grandparents lived in Goshen in an old farmhouse in the mountains. Um, Goshen, Pennsylvania. Goshen, Pennsylvania, yes. And uh, so I spent a, a good deal of my summers um, in the mountains. And so, and there's some Native stories, Native American connection, and um, that was passed down orally uh, about uh, Sasquatch, we'll say. Um, and as children, we always thought it was, you know, to keep us, you know, to come back home. Now, I'm going to back up for a second. My grandmother had 52 first grandbabies. So, and she was a, what they would call a spiritualist. So she would talk to us, and uh, so anyway, as we grew older, and as I grew older, my uncle Lynn, we called him the BFI, Big Freaking Indian, <laughs> and um, he would tell us things about Sasquatch, you know, um, and he would say, you know, that it was one of the things that he was, he was six foot four, and he says, it's one of the things I'm scared of because it came to my house. Well, it did go to his house. And if you need to straighten me out here, you just go ahead. But the, uh, so we have always been, had oral tradition and stories about my brother of nature. That's what I call him. Uh, about Sasquatch. Now there's many of my cousins that have also had experiences. So... Um, if you guys kind of want to direct me a little bit yeah. on what so, you would like to see. So it sounds like from a very early age, you had relatives that were raised right here in this area of Pennsylvania. Out in the mountain, even further out in, not up on top of a mountain, in the mountains. What do you mean by in the mountains? Well, in Goshen, when you go out there, you're you're in the mountains. You're... I mean, you make you make it sound like we're going to go in like an underground tunnel cave. Or no, something. <laughs> actually, what you are is I mean, even though these aren't you know the Alleghenies aren't you know like five thousand feet or anything like that, but you're going to go into a place where um, there are it's all dirt roads. Uh, if you go back to when I was a child, uh, there was only a few people that lived there, and that would be my grandparents and um, maybe just a couple others. So. But the story is always, the oral tradition was always there about. So in an early age, your grandfather, who you called the BFI. That was my Uncle Lynn. Your Uncle Lynn, excuse me. Um, he told you that he was scared of this creature. Can you tell us specifically what he told you? And Well, what he said was, you know, I asked him one day, I said, uh, is there anything you're scared of? He said, my brother Carl and uh, that thing has been following me since I was a kid. Well, it went to his house. Now this will be a story, um, and this, and the story is, and, and, and he's telling me, and then Glenn is telling me. So I'll tell you his side. It came to the house. This would so, have been roughly when. Nineteen and uh, seventy-eight. That he told you the story, or that it happened to him. It happened. Okay. And um, and Glenn always felt that it was just nonsense. Let's say that. Well. Lynn always talked about it, and, and he always taught us, grand, 
his uh, nieces and nephews about it and so they came to the house and it grabbed the trailer and it shook it and to this day there's still marks on that trailer um, and then Glenna will tell me she said Michael I've never heard anything like it she said it screamed and screeched and it shook the whole trailer and Lynn was a big man so he grabbed the kids and her and put them in the center of the trailer and huddled over them and she says now I I truly believe she said it came to the house and that's what Lynn said he says I it doesn't respect me it came to my home it's followed me since I was a kid um, so and there's always been that eerie feeling in in the mountains and, and my grandmother would tell you some stories but can I just bring you back to something he yes said. he said it's always followed me since I was a kid since and I was he said a kid something else happened to him when he was younger he said that thing has followed him since he was a kid, and he always had that awkward, eerie feeling. And then that day, he says, but no one actually believed him. Did he ever say something else happened to him that he had uh, an encounter with? No, he just said that he knew it was there. Um, but he never told me anything specific as you're asking, did he see it or, mm -hmm. or anything. He just said he knew it was there until that day it came to his home. And um, and his girlfriend, who thought it was more mysterious or uh, I can't think of the word right now, but um, but then she knew. Yeah. She, she believed. She said, "Michael, I I never believed your uncle, but now I do." Um, what made her believe? Because when it came to the house, it sh took the trailer and it grabbed the top of the trailer so that would be let's say you got three foot of underpanning so you're talking 11 feet and then it grabbed the bottom of the trailer and it started shaking it and she had her kids there and uh and lynn just took them and and coveted them in the middle of the room mm -hmm. and uh said it's gonna be all right that's what he told me and, um, and there's more to it. And, I'm, and you know, historically, it's hard to re represent, you know, or, you know, the full story. But right, because it's somebody else's story, and you didn't. But anyway, it. she now she now believed, and Lynn, what he felt, more understood. Of course, I always believed him, and so did the rest of us because we had our own experiences. Can you? So let's just understand a little bit about your past and background. Walk me through it real quickly. We're not going to spend a lot of time on it, but. Um, you yourself have lived in this general area of Pennsylvania where we are for the last two years. On top of the mountain. Okay. And then prior to the last two years, where did you live? Um, I lived in Clearfield. Pennsylvania? Yeah. And prior to that? And uh, how long were you in Clearfield? I've... Now, to make that more representative, I've come back here since I was a kid. Okay. Every summer, just about. Um, and then as I was married, I still came back here every summer and spent time with Lynn. So you've always spent time with Lynn. I've always here. spent time in the mountains. So your whole There's, life you've been, you've been in this area. Right? I have spent days in the mountains because Lynn could go to places driving around um, because he knew the mountains that well. Because sure. he was born and raised. And so looking at your life, can you tell us personal experiences that you've had that you think would be of interest of somebody that well, investigates supernatural I will tell you um, so I came back up here and you know of course in the back of my mind I always think when I come I was living in Texas I came back up here and I was staying down at my cousin Mickey's which is about halfway out Mount Zion this is how long ago that you're referencing I'm going to reference that to be uh, 96 and, um, so 22, 23 years ago. Yeah, so I had come back up. And, of course, you know, in the back of my mind, there's a little anxiety and stuff because Mickey lived in the mountains, and I know the stories that have always been told to me. So I'm staying at his house, and um, all of a sudden, now, if I can give you just a little, the deck is... On the front, it's only about four feet wide, but it's 20 feet long to the swimming pool, and then it's wide open. So I'm laying on the couch, and all of a sudden, this thing hits the deck. And I know in my mind, and this is what I'm thinking, but I froze. I literally froze. I'm thinking, 
that thing jumped over at least six feet to get up onto the deck and it shook every window it rattled the house and I knew it wasn't no bear because how'd you know it was a creature at this point because I did just, you know it wasn't a tree falling on the deck or something because it ran across the deck it ran 20 some feet and shook the whole house as it ran and it rattled every window. So you're laying on the couch in 96 at your uncle's place. My cousin. Cousin's place. Yeah. And you're just kind of laying there. Now, could you see the deck from where you were laying? No, I couldn't see the deck because it was on the, the same wall I was laying. Gotcha. But I could see the two windows. It was a glass sliding door, which would then open up. And I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm saying, oh, God, please don't look in the window. And this, whatever it was, hit. It hit and so after hard. it hit this deck... You started hearing what you perceived to be very loud footsteps running off the deck. Loud. It, it wasn't that I could hear the footsteps. It rattled the house. And it ran. I bet you there was probably only four steps for it to go 27 feet. At least 20 feet down that deck. It was probably only four steps. But it shook the whole damn house. And then what happened? I froze. I literally froze because I... Now, in my mind, I'm going back to my grandparents and the stories. And, and I always thought that when I got up there in the mountains. When I come back here to Pennsylvania, I always think, you know, it could happen. So then, about 45 minutes later, my cousin Mickey came home. He owned the place. And I was relieved. And I went out to him. And we walked into the house. And I told him, I said, Mickey, I said, I don't... You know, I've never seen Sasquatch, but there's nothing that could shake and rattle your home like it just did. You know, and Mickey said to me, he said, Michael, he says, I got a pistol in my bedroom. Because now he had a deck on top of that deck to his personal bedroom. He said, I got a pistol in my bedroom. He said, about two weeks ago, he says, that same damn thing came to the house he says and it ran across your side then it ran across in front of the swimming pool and then it shook my deck up on top of my bedroom he says I got a pistol I said well what else did you do he says I called the police he says I'm something's out here and I'm going to shoot it um, if it comes back again and I said well what the police do he said nothing <laughs> they didn't come out and I said, so you know what I'm talking about? He says, yep. It was Sasquatch. He says, I didn't see it. But he says, there's nothing that could move that quick and that many feet across my decks and shake the house like it did, like you're saying. So that's my, my personal experience of how powerful and heavy and big this this thing is two years ago I'm going down over the mountain here and uh, and so I I kind of glance off to the right but you got to remember now there's you can only see so far down for a short period of time so when I seen what I seen I seen the trees about 12 feet up and they were pushing away and I'm not going to say I've seen arms. No, this would, is when? This was two years ago. So two years ago, right here. Right going down the mountain, Mount Zion. And so i seen it pushing the trees, like 12 feet up. It's pushing trees. So I slowed way down as fast as I could. But, you know, after a certain point, you can't see because the knoll takes over your vision. You can't no longer see. But I know what I've seen. It there's nothing that could push the trees. It wasn't no bear. I know bears. I've seen so many. My, my cousin Mickey's got four bears in his, you know, over 700 pounds, 600 pounds in his, in his, that are uh, stuffed. It wasn't no bear. But I, uh, but I, that's all I can say is I could only see it pushing the trees. <coughs> and I thought, that's pretty cool, man. You know, once again, I've, I can't say to anybody other than my cousins and people that know the story. If my grandparents were alive, my Grammy, I'm sure, would tell me, Michael, what's, you know, 
what you've seen and what you know you've experienced because she always warned us and uh, so I did that was those are my two experiences with it I'll give you a family perspective I got cousins they're all I'm the smallest our, our family's the smallest but they're six four six five and I brought friend up from Texas a young lady and she was talking about oh I wouldn't be scared to go in them woods and my cousin said you know what he says I'm six foot four he says I've been born and raised in these mountains he says I know the stories and the oral tradition he says and if you want to go in them woods at night you go right ahead the next night was a screech a horrible noise that you could ever imagine and why it was the next night I, I couldn't I'm not gonna make it mystical or whatever I don't know but that was soon after I would say three months after Mickey and I had both encountered uh, did, this, did this lady hear this she heard it and after she heard it she says I'll never now you know, there's all there's conversations. You know, it could have been maybe an owl killing a rabbit and all that stuff, but um, no, it wasn't. It was the sound of it was Sasquatch, and you know, and then other people tell you that it would add to the story. Would say they heard a beating in the woods before that noise came. They heard a beating, a drum. But it wasn't a drum, it was a beating, like something beating on a tree or something, whatever. But um, I didn't hear that, so I can't say that I did, but I know what I heard. And 